I did. I did. Great bounce back weekend of sales too. Last weekend was a slow weekend for me, and this weekend bounced back in a good way. Hope everyone is off to a good start of their week. What do we got? 9.30 a.m. Monday morning, kicking things off. Uh, for the weekend, the tail of the tape, 37 total items going out the door on 35 orders. And let's see, we shipped 16 of those on Saturday. So today we got work to do. We got 21 units going out the door on 19 orders. One of those is a Posh Bundle. 13 eBay and 8 Poshmark going out the door. Good morning, good morning. Let me know where you, we're going to start first. Are we going to ship eBay or Poshmark first? We'll ship both. We'll ship everything. But what are we going to start with? Let me know down below in the chat. eBay or Poshmark are we starting with? Don't worry. We got coffee. The week is going to be fine. The day is going to be good. eBay or Poshmark. Hit me up in the chat. You're the boss for at least a second here. Good morning, Jay Baker. How are you? You're the boss. eBay or Poshmark. Hit me up in the chat. What are we starting with? Got some iced coffee, the medium roast, delicious. eBay from Samuel, you're the boss. You got it, Samuel. Let me know how things are going with your business. I want to hear all about it. I hope you're doing well. Hope things are picking back up for March. Good news is, is over the weekend, we hit our uh, third big checkpoint. I always say in terms of like sales picking back up from the slowest part of the year, which is for me is the first two weeks of February. February 15th, things start picking up. March 1st, they pick up a little, even, a little bit more. And then usually March 15th is where my business hits like full bore. That's where I have the highest sell through rates. And it usually stays up for like six or eight weeks of my best sales. Obviously, some weeks are still good. You're going to have ups and downs, right? But my best sales historically have been March 15th through about May 1st or May 15th, sometimes a little bit later in May too. Second Life, what's up? Kenzie, Kenzie Ray and Mama, how are you? You're hiding on another account, but Purple Moon Lady is back. All right, we got a couple votes for eBay. We'll go ahead and start with eBay. Uh, grand total on eBay, 13 eBay orders. We shipped on Saturday too, so that's not the full weekend, but 13 eBay orders, a strong eBay weekend. Let's kick things off. I got to print out these shipping labels real quick. Let me hit print, and then we'll just start Jimmy Jammy. And this is a great place to ask questions. You're going to see the whole process of me shipping out all these orders. You're going to see what's moving, how much I'm getting for these items. Yeah, and anything you want to know, let me happy to talk through. If you're a reseller, a great place to hang out. There's some awesome people in the chat, people who know their stuff. Let's see how we're going to do this. Okay. Never tried Poshmark. I'm strictly eBay, but thinking of cross posting. Jay Baker, cool. How many listings do you have total? How long you been? Uh, how long you been doing eBay? And what types of stuff? There's like three questions I have for you. How many units that do you have listed? Uh, how long you've been selling? And uh, what was the third one? Oh, what kind of stuff do you sell? Let me know. I can give you my two cents about whether uh, Poshmark is the, the right move or not. All right. First order is going out to Herberto. And by the way, all these streams are available on recordings. Like, So if you missed a stream or you got to come in and out or you're working right now and you want to go back and see stuff, they're available on uh, Facebook and YouTube. You can rewatch them as soon as this live ends. Those are available to rewatch. And if you're watching one of those replays, go ahead and bright ship down below in the in the chat, S-H-I-P, so that I know that you're watching. And of course, if you have questions and we're not live, I'll go back and answer all those questions. That's really easy. All right, first one, without further ado, Foot Joy. Brand new with tags. It's a retail arbitrage play. These retail for 100 bucks. And this one sold to Heriberto uh, for a best offer of $42 plus shipping plus $5.95 shipping. So buyers all in for $48 on these. My buy cost on this was around $15 or $16 all in. And I bought a whole bunch of Foot Joy and they are moving. I get a lot of low ball offers on, on Foot Joys, but... They ultimately all end up selling for between forty and forty-nine dollars. Thank you, Herberto. Morning, Kit Flippin' Kim. How was your weekend? I hope you cranked over there. I have unpaid. I have an unpaid intern now. She wants to learn. I teach her by doing it all hands-on. Um, is that is that your son or daughter that's your unpaid intern? Or what are you doing over there? You should be paying your interns, y'all. I worked for a career center at a university for for years and years. And that was one of the conversations we'd always have. I'm like, hey, you should be paying your interns, y'all. So if your son or daughter is watching or your unpaid intern is watching, let, let them know that Chris is in their corner. 
All right, Roberto, your order's out the door. Shipping label on this is $4.55. It's an eight ounce USPS Ground Advantage label. Going in a nine by 12 poly bag out the door. Next one is a Patagonia Cinchilla. Uh, you can't see the tag on this, but Patagonia Cinchilla 2XL. It had like a one little tiny little like mark on the sleeve. Uh, it's accepted a best offer $26 on this. Otherwise, this is more like a close to a $40 item, $35 item, but happy to just move this thing along. I listed this last week. It's already out the door. Probably took about four days to sell on this. This is also going to go ground advantage. All my eBay today are going ground advantage, every single one, including like jackets like this one, some jeans. we got shorts going out the door. Everything's going ground advantage today, which is kind of uncommon. What's up, Ethan Blair? How are sales going over there? Love to hear about what's going on in your biz. What trends are you seeing? What questions do you have? All right. This is going out to Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. 26 bucks in the Patagonia. I don't know how much I paid for this. I don't remember if I got this off whatnot or if I got this. It might have come on my bulk buy. I bought out a bunch of stuff from another eBay reseller that was getting out of business. I just forget where this one came from, to be honest with you. This is going to Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for supporting our tiny little business. When did you buy a label printer? Just started two months ago. Um, when I first started, I still had a full-time job and I worked in a, in a company that was in a co-working space. Well, the company owned the co-working space. So uh, part of that deal is I was allowed to use all services of the co-working space, which included free coffee, draft beer after 5 p.m., stuff like that, you know, snacks throughout the day also meant I could use the printer there. So I just used a printer there for my shipping labels for a while until it just became, I was like, you know what? Cutting out these shipping labels is annoying. Um, I'd rather have a, a shipping label printer. I use the IDPRT SP410. If you forget all those numbers and letters, I have it linked in my profile. Usually it's under $100 on sale on Amazon and you can find all my reselling tools. They're linked in my, um, my profile or go to chris at peak.com, just like the name on the screen. And you'll find that IDPRT. It's available through Amazon with prime shipping. Never pay money for ink again. Those ink cartridges really add up. Again, mine, I was printing them for free from my work. They were totally cool with it. I was transparent about it, uh, but it was still a pain in the butt. I had to cut out all the labels. I had to tape it all up. Now I can just, you know, rip off this little thing and we're good to go. Two cents per label is my cost. I don't have to use any tape uh, and I never have to use ink any at all. No, my daughter is 11. This is an adult person. I was going to create classes, but she said she would pay me to come, but I did the opposite. They come to learn for free. That's cool. So the person isn't going to work for you at the end of this internship. The internship is meant so that they can go and, uh, and work on their own afterwards. Is that the idea? All right. Next up is a G4, one of my favorite golf brands. Maybe my favorite golf brand to sell. It's tough. I like William Murray too. G4. This is brand new with tags. You can see the MSRP on this battle area is $120. Men's size medium, awesome flower print. Uh, this sold, this is a retail arbitrage play. I forget how much I paid for it. Maybe $29, maybe $39. I'm not sure. Sold for $69 on eBay on a best offer. I had it listed, I think, at $79. It went for $69. This is the only one I had in this colorway. Shipping labels costing me $4.68. It's USPS ground advantage. It's going in a 9 by 12 poly bag. Out the door. It's making some money. And this is going to Mas Masa Masashi. Masashi? Going all the way to Bellevue, Washington. The shipping labels costing me $4.68. $4.68. Cents all the way across the country from Asheville, North Carolina to Washington. G4. I guess it's golf season in Washington already. Oddly so right now, but I sold the cricket jacket. I paid 31 for a best offer, 125. That's sick. You sold a cricket jacket. I've never even seen a cricket jacket. All I find is like Henley's polos, long sleeve polos. I never find a freaking uh, a jacket from them. That's awesome. I'm tired of cutting and taping already. Yeah, just get more efficient. And to me, the biggest thing is not paying money for ink. For a regular printer that's kind of where i'm at with that whole thing 
Like, why am I going to waste all that money? Back when I did buy the printer, I worked out like how much it was costing me for each order for tape, how much it was costing me for the paper, how much it was costing me for the ink. And then I worked out a break even point of like how many sales I had to, uh, to make just to break even on that printer. And that wasn't even counting the cost of the time that I saved. I just did that math based on like materials uh, how, when it was going to pay me back. And I think it was like a couple hundred orders or something like that. I forget what the math was, but um, you could work all that math out too. just figure out how much tape you're using per per thing, how much paper you're using, and then calculate about how much, um, how many labels you get per your ink cartridge, right? And work out the math and see what it is. But again, time is the most valuable thing. So if you can get back some time, you can use that time to make you some more money. That's the way I see things. Or spend that time with your family or kids because you got more time. Next order is going out to John. This is a brand I haven't messed with before. This might be the first time I've sold it. Um, the brand is Risen. Let me see if I can get the label here. Risen Jeans. I got this in a buyout. I'm another, another reseller. It's brand new with tags. Risen Jeans. Uh, based on comps, I don't think I would pick these up at a thrift store for $5 to resell them. Uh, brand new with tags. This sold for $24 on a best offer. So I would imagine you use the market's probably around $15. So would I pay five to sell jeans for 15 Probably not unless the sell-through rate was really good. It's a brand I've never seen before at the thrift store, or at least I don't remember seeing. Anyway, Risen Jeans, let me know if you had experience with those in the past. I think this is the first one going out the door for me. And I have two of them today. A little spoiler alert. Two pairs of Risen Jeans brand new tags going out the door. I think they're similar prices too. This is going out to John and Lori. Thank you so much. We're going to Fletcher, Oklahoma. Well, how about that? I'm in Fletcher, North Carolina. We're sending to our our sister city or brother city. I don't know. In Oklahoma. Let's go. Let's go. Go thermal printer. You won't go back. Yeah. You'll, I don't think anyone's ever bought a thermal printer and said, you know, I wish I could go back to that other thing where I was taping out my orders and all that. I don't think anyone's ever said that in the history of the world. Thanks, John and Lori. I had a repeat customer somewhere here in one of these orders too. I'm going to put a little note on their thank you card too. I just noticed that. I think it was the Brooks Brothers one. When I get to that, remind me. Uh, next up is going to Malcolm. A pair of Prana jogger pants. Women's size 12. This is the model is the Haley Jogger 2. Women's size 12. MSRP is $95. These sold for $44. Bucks. Best offer of $44. They started their offers at 30 bucks and I just stuck at 44. They came all the way up to 44 after trying all kinds of numbers. Hey, people are just trying to get a good deal. I respect it. But the same token, I know the market value for this stuff. I know the sell through rate. I've already sold like three pairs of these. So I'm going to stick at my number. I'm not just going to give them away to somebody because someone's trying to get the best possible price. Remember people are tougher at negotiating when they're on a computer screen that person was in person they probably would have just paid the full asking price you can be tough in your negotiations too i believe in you good morning sean douglas how are you welcome aboard south texas is in the house what's up how are you how are sales nobody's talking about their sales i want to hear about your sales i'm telling you all about mine all the little dark details what's going on in your biz tell me i'm interested uh, next up is a pair of Ermena, or a, a shirt, Ermenegildo Senya. It's hard to say, well, it's easy to sell. Ermenegildo Senya. Senya. It's hard to say. I don't know Italian. I've never taken a day of Italian in my life. This sold to Robert. You, you can just call it EZ if you want to. Uh, this sold for best offer, $22.00 plus shipping. It is a really high-end brand. The shirts don't always sell really fast for me. This is a size medium. They tend to be a slow mover, but I do get between, I mean, this is kind of low, $22, but between $22 and $29, I'll get for these shirts, but sometimes it's just a wait for the right buyer sort of thing. The suits and blazers are a better pickup for sure and a faster seller, but I still pick up the shirts. They always do sell. Sometimes it just takes a little while. I'm fine with picking up high-end stuff. If it's going to take a little bit. Also took a lower offer on that. Let's move it out the door. Paid $5 at a thrift store, sold for $22 plus buyer paid for the shipping. Shipping label costs $4.38. These have been selling um, faster than I thought. 
I feel like I've sold five pairs of these already. I thought this was gonna be kind of a long tail retail arbitrage item. So you can see this is a Polo Ralph Lauren uh, classic fit chino. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, size 38 by 34. So it's a good bigger size, which is nice, but uh, just a black, I think flat front chino, nothing fancy right here. I got them for cheap though, $15 a piece. MSRP is 115. I think you can see that right there. One, 115. Uh, this sold for full asking price, $49. I paid 15 bucks for it. And I, I think I'm at like five of these sold. And I think I have like five left. I picked these up in January. I just thought it was going to be really long tail. It hasn't been fast, like crazy fast, but I'm getting in the forties for every single pair. A couple of them have sold for full price too. But it seems like a really common item. Not sure. It's going to Ricardo. Thanks, Ricardo. Ricardo paid $59 plus $49 plus nine shipping, $58 all in. And the shipping label is costing me $7.16. It's going ground advantage. This is an order that almost always would go on a padded flat rate up until last summer. But when they added this ground advantage rates, it's a lot cheaper. The padded flat rates are $8 and 70 something cents. Now I very rarely use them because this ground advantage is only seven sixteen. I'm starting two house cleanouts this week. I get to treasure pick the whole house. Nice. That sounds like fun to me. Don't threaten me with a good time. I've shipped 100 items so far this month. No whatnot shows. Nice, Kenzie. Crushing over there. Second life, just crushing. I love hearing that. I love hearing that. I love hearing about y'all's businesses. What's going on? What's going on? What did I miss here? All right, next up, we still got Poshmark orders too, but we got a bunch of eBay. eBay. Here's that repeat customer. It pops up on the screen, on your shipping screen. It says repeat customer. And this is going to Timothy in Milton, Mass. Got a Brooks Brothers shirt. People tell me all the time, Brooks Brothers don't sell. You might not be picking up the right Brooks Brothers. Maybe your photos aren't good enough. And maybe your pricing isn't good enough. But check out the pattern on that Brooks Brothers. Awesome pattern on this. Not a common pattern. I've never sold this, seen or bought this pattern in Brooks Brothers before. That's usually a good thing. Very modern look to it. It is a size extra large too. So the combination of that bigger size and that really nice pattern that's uncommon. Got me full asking price, $22 plus $5.95 shipping. I picked this shirt up uh, about a month, maybe six weeks ago. Uh, Brooks Brothers, one of my best selling brands every single year. But I am selective. I don't pick up every single one. I'm looking for modern patterns and bigger sizes. That combination does well, especially if they have the little, the little golden fleece logo on the chest. That does even better. I'm going to put a little note on this one. Thanks for your repeat business. There it is. Thank you, Timothy repeat customer they're happy they like the fast shipping they like the uh the nice professional packaging maybe the thank you note hopefully my bad attitude too thank you timothy going up some milton mass out the door paid five dollars at a thrift store sold for 22 dollars plus 595 shipping buyers all in timothy is all in for 28 bucks on that check out this next shirt check it out this is not a brand i pick up everything from the brand is jane barnes but look at the ruffles on the front here and look at that wild pattern it's almost like zebra really fun piece right here so jane barnes when they when they're the the vintage ones or they have just something really unique going on like a crazy pattern and or a ruffle like this. I've never picked up a ruffle one before. They sell really well for me. This sold for full asking price. I think it was full asking price, $23 plus buyer paid shipping, $5.95. So they're all in for $29 on that. I paid five at a thrift store. Uh, it took about a month and a half to sell on this. It's going out to John. Thanks, John. Shipping label, $5.07. It's USPS ground advantage going to 12 ounce rate. Uh, I've been selling tons of new skincare and makeup for a client. One item today sold for 40 bucks. Let's go. I don't know anything about that category. Not the first thing. I couldn't even tell you a single brand in that category. But that's what's so cool about the reselling business is that uh, 
you can have your little niches. You can also, if you have a business like yours, Kenzie, you can learn about all kinds of different categories because you do those clean outs or you go to garage sales, or you go to estate sales and you can stumble across all kinds of good goodies for cheap. So that's, I respect it. I think that's really cool. We'll see. I might get back more into the, the garage sale game again this summer for a little bit just to kind of mix things up and keep it interesting. It's always fun. I love the content from those too. It's fun, like the negotiating content and all that stuff. Let's go to John. And it's just fun picking up sometimes things that are different than clothing, just kind of mixing it up. Getting back to my roots is a good old school picker. Got a Callaway brand new with tags. I don't pick this brand up a ton. Occasionally I'll pick it up on um, when it's brand new with tags. So this is a, a polyester puffer jacket. And it's a, it's actually, a, I think it's a hybrid. No, just a golf jacket, polyfill, and uh, $95 MSRP on it. Callaway, I didn't show you that. Well, whatever. It's going to be hard to see, but Callaway, little puffer jacket. Sold for best offer $42 plus shipping on this. $42 plus $8.95 shipping. So the buyer's all in for $51 on this. This took about a month to sell. It's going to William. Williams in Staten Island. $6.12 is the shipping label. It's going USPS ground advantage at a two pound rate. This used to be, again, a padded flat rate envelope. Typically, it'd be $8.70 something cents. Ground advantage, $6.12. Saving like $2.50 thanks to that ground advantage rate. Freaking love that. I don't remember how much I paid for this jacket. If I picked up Callaway retail arbitrage, you better believe it was cheap. All right, going to Michael. Is that right? No, going to William. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. This client gave me three full bins of skincare and makeup. I earned sixty percent of the profit and free buy, and I like that. I like that A little consignment dealy. Little consignment dealy. I like it. Out the door. I think I might be missing some comments. No, maybe not. Thank you, William. We got two more eBay, then we got a bunch of Poshmark to do. Next up, Joseph A. Banks Blazer. All weekend, I was like, hey, I don't think I've sold any Blazers yet this weekend. That's strange. I've been selling a lot of Blazers and suits lately. And then last night, before I went to bed, got this Joseph A. Banks Blazer. Really nice pattern on this. Size 54R. I've actually already sold this blazer. It got returned because it didn't fit. And then I relisted it last week and it already sold again. Joseph A. Banks. The reason this sold so quickly twice is that pattern and the size is 54R. So a really big size, like a 4X combined with that, with that pattern is a good seller for me for Joseph A. Banks. If this was a plain pattern or a smaller size, I wouldn't have messed with it. It's that combination, the big size and the nice pattern out the door. I picked this up in January. It's already sold twice and been returned in that period of time. Thank you, Kyle. Hopefully this time it doesn't come back. Hopefully this time it doesn't come back. You know how that goes. Good bounce back weekend for me. I'm feeling good. Last weekend was a slower weekend. I was expecting it to be better last weekend. This one was a good weekend. 37 total items. That's including 11 shoes that I sold on whatnot. So 26 if you just look at eBay Poshmark, which is a pretty good weekend. I think we have another gear yet still to hit. And maybe we'll hit it this, this coming weekend. I think there's one more gear. I think we can break 30, maybe even 35 orders a weekend coming up for the next few weekends. That's what we're looking for. Let's freaking go. Joseph A. Banks, out the door for Kyle. Thank you, brother. It's going in a 10 by 8 by 6 box. The shipping label on this, it's a three-pound rate, $7.84 ground advantage. That's cheap. Priority, this would cost me, I think it was like $10, $10 and some odd cents for priority. So I'll take that savings all day. Thank you, Kyle. Little Joseph A. Banks blazer. Sold for $32 plus $10.95 shipping. So the buyer's all in for, what did I say? 43 bucks. Boom, gone. One more eBay, then we got some Poshmark orders for you, y'all. Got to jump. Thank you. 
Good to see you. Thanks for popping in, Kenzie. I always appreciate your company for a little bit. Hope you have a good day. Uh, hope you have a great day of sales too. Selling some skincare over there. Polo Golf. This this person was negotiating hard on this piece. We just listed this Friday. Um, and it sold overnight last night. So it took two days to sell and sold for a best offer of $27. I had it listed for $29. It's 100% merino wool polo golf. And it does have the logo right there on the chest. So it's a little quarter zip vest, sweater vest. Great pickup right here. Sold in two days for $27 plus shipping. I could have probably got $35 if I held out for this thing, but I just wanted to get this thing up and moving, get my profit, spin that money, keep on moving and grooving. 27 bucks on that. They were offering like $20 and $22 and $24, and I just kept, kept hanging on at 27 You know how I do. And they came up to the 27 They were just trying to get the best deal they could. I knew they wanted this, uh, this sweater vest. It's a great size. It's in perfect condition. I know the market rate on this. Market's like 30 to 35. 27 is a good deal. I knew they'd come up and get it. And they did. And if they didn't come up and get it, that's okay. I'm still below market at 29. Somebody's going to come on scoff at 29. Thank you, Michael, for your spirited negotiation. Everybody wins when a negotiation is done well. You got a good deal. Uh, I got a quick sale. Everybody's happy. That's what negotiation is about. It's no winning. There's no winning or losing or beating someone else. Everybody wins when it's done. Right. Unless you read that book, Art of the Deal, and then the whole idea is beating somebody else in negotiation. It's a really terrible approach to business and life, if you ask me, but that's a, a different conversation altogether. Travis Matthew sale, our first Poshmark going out the door. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six shipments going out the door on Poshmark. One of them is a three pack, a bundle deal for three Travis Matthew shorts. So eight total units going out the door. First one is, we'll just do this bundle deal, get this one out the door. Three pairs of Travis Matthew shorts, all size 36, all brand new with tags. MSRP on this one's $80. MSRP on this one is the same model, so it's $80. And then this one is a different model. This one's $89, so 90 bucks on this one. So if you look at it, 90, 80, 80, uh, it's 170 plus 80 is uh, uh 250 so $250 worth of shorts. This person paid $90 for these three pairs in their size, three different colors, a black, a blue, and a light blue. All Travis Matthew going out the door. Great deal. Great deal. This is going to go, um, you know what? Let's throw it in the box. The boxes are free. Why not? Uh, let's do, yeah, do one of these. No. Do it in one of these little. Do it in one of these. This is a box number four. It is a seven by seven by six box. Remember, Poshmark. Everything goes priority. You can use any USPS priority branded shipping materials, including flat rate. You just can't use Express. Any, anything, even a padded flat rate envelope or a flat rate envelope or a medium flat rate box, all those things. Three pairs of Travis Matthew shorts going out to Marcy. Going out to Marcy. Thanks, Marcy. And these USPS priority boxes are free. So some people might ask me, why don't you just use like a poly bag for that? Because, well, I pay for the poly bags. They cost me like six or seven cents a piece. This box, free. Thank you, Marcy. Nice deal on those shorts. Good deal for them. Good deal for me. $30 a pair on those. I paid um, my buy cost on those was uh, between 11 and $12 a piece. So 
we'll just use the $12 number. I was in for 36 bucks and they paid 90 for those three. So a nice little deal right there for me. Good little deal for them because they those are $250 retail price for those three combined. Let's go. Lucky brand. Men's size 50 by 30. For some reason, Lucky brand all of a sudden is selling for me. I sold two last week, one today. Uh, size 50 by 30 on this Lucky brand. It, the model is the Athletic Fit Straight. I feel like I have two pairs of these. This sold for full asking price, $25. Bigger sizes and Lucky Brand definitely do a little bit better for me. Uh, we'll put this in a, we'll use a padded flat rate envelope for this. The jeans fit nicely in these, especially a bigger size pair like this. These are free at USPS.com. Remember, you can use any USPS priority packaging, including flat rate for Poshmark. So a lot of people are going to yell in the chat, hey, you can't use that package. Um, if it was eBay, I'd have to print out a very a specific label that says padded flat rate envelope on it. But with Poshmark, it don't matter. I can use any of these. A lot of people don't know you can use the flat rates. This is going to Angel. Thank you, Angel. Lucky brand jeans, 25 bucks. I paid $5 at the thrift store for these. Out the door. Let me know how are things going in your biz. I like hearing about your biz too. I share every little dark detail of this one. I want to hear how, how are sales. Are you seeing a pickup? March 15th is usually that last transition date. That last uptick in sales. My business usually hums at the highest rate for sell-through rate. The highest rate is March 15th through depending on the year either may 1st may 15th or even sometimes like memorial day like late may is when it hums at its best it's that change of seasons people are buying stuff for spring and summer now they're also still buying things like jeans and long sleeve shirts too it's a great transition season same thing with the fall season have around 200 listings no auction what's up Pimo? how are you brother from another mother what is up I have uh, 200 listings, says Jay Baker. No auctions. I started really trying to sell a couple years ago. I sold around 1,700 items. Nice, you're cranking over there. Uh, I sell everything and and everything pretty much, but I've really been concentrating on clothing, running lots of great new brands lately. Nice, Jay Baker. So, yeah, I think this is a continuation of that conversation of maybe Poshmark. Um, yeah, just know that when you start cross-listing, you're going to add some complexity to your business. Even if you get a software tool, which I would recommend, uh, if you're going to start uh, listing on two platforms, but it is going to add complexity to your business. Uh, RZ Flippers on Instagram might tune in on this because I know, I think Zach, you recently, I know you recently jumped over and started doing Poshmark too. Let us know how that's going. Let us know if you agree with that idea that it adds complexity. It will add more time per unit um, and you got to stay organized. So Jay Baker, if you're already organized, you have like a good system for things and then you cross list, that's going to be great because you're going to be duplicating your organization. If you tend to be a mess and disorganized, and that's fine, I respect you too. But if you have like a system that's kind of all over the place and now you start cross-listing, what you're doing is you're duplicating your unorganization. You're duplicating your messiness and your sloppiness. Um, so yeah, I think the other thing is too, if you're earlier on and you're not that early, I mean, you're, you're a couple years in, you've sold 1700 items, but when people are early on and they haven't dialed in their photos yet, they haven't dialed in their descriptions, they're not coding measurements in their listings, um, and they haven't got their pricing strategy and all that stuff down. If they start cross-listing early on, all they're doing is duplicating shit. So if they have crappy listings um, with you know photos that they should still be you know investing in, maybe a, like some photo lights or you know a tool to make their photos better or a better camera or something like that, instead they're investing in cross-listing instead of getting the fundamentals down. I would say get the fundamentals down first. Jay Baker, it sounds like you got the fundamentals down. But I was like, whenever we have the conversation about cross-listing, I just I'd like to introduce that to people. Make sure that you got your systems dialed and that you're organized and you've already made your photos and your descriptions and your item titles as good as they possibly can be. Then start duplicating them. Because if you start cross-listing, all you're doing and you're not ready yet, all you're doing is duplicating shit and duplicating unorganization. Jay Baker, I don't think that describes you. You're cranking kind of over there. But I feel like I'm going to say that because I'm talking to you and I'm also talking to the rest of the chat too. So that's being said, let's ship out a pair of jeans. So I told you this is a new brand for me. I already shipped out one of these this morning, brand new with tags, Risen. I got this from a buyout. Uh, I bought out a bunch of items. I cherry picked somebody's eBay store that was going out of business. This was part of that. I'd never heard of this brand before. I don't think I've ever seen it. It's a women's brand, Risen Jeans. Um, size here is 1130. 
sold on a best offer on Poshmark for $24. I paid $6 per unit on that buyout. And I paid shipping on top of that too. So basically $7 per unit. This one sold for $24 plus uh, buyer pays shipping on Poshmark. Uh, I can use one of these. Could use a tieback envelope for this one right here. USPS priority package, it's free. I use this for most of my Poshmark orders. Let me know if you have experience with that brand, Risen. I don't think it's really a pickup, not at $5 anyway, if it's used. I mean, it's only selling new here for 24. So used, I imagine the market's gotta be something like 15 bucks. So guessing it's probably a low sell through rate too, but I don't really know enough about the brand. Did not put my shipping, my paper note in there. You're on a good roll too. A good roll. Let's get back on that roll. All right, going out to Christy. Thanks, Christy. Next up is a pair of Peter Millar swim trunks. I think this might be the first pair of swim trunks I've sold so far for the season. I don't pick up a lot of swim trunks. It's a pair of Peter Millar. Look at the all over pattern on this. It's like cocktail shakers, martini glasses. It comes with a koozie like attached to it. It's a lined one. This sold, it's brand new with tags. Sold for $55 plus shipping. I think I got these off of whatnot. Don't ask me what I paid for them. So $55 buyer pays for shipping on these. These are going out via Poshmark priority. It's going to use a private mailer here. Thanks. I've really started concentrating on organization. I feel like it's definitely taking me to a new level. I know I feel less stressed. Everything is in a location now. That's huge. Yeah, that's huge. Because if you duplicate disorganization by cross-listing, you're going to drive yourself absolutely crazy. So I like it. Sounds like you're in a good place. Now you're going to have to choose a cross-listing tool that makes sense. I'm not going to tell you what to do there. There's a variety of tools. Different people like different tools. Some people like cross-listers that are desktop, you know, like you use it on your computer. Some people like the apps. Um, yeah, some people want automation tools built in. Some people don't. So I'm not going to tell you what to do with a cross-lister, but do your homework and uh, make a good choice. There's a lot of people who will tell you exactly what to do and say, this is the cross-lister that you should be using. That's because they got an affiliate link attached to that cross-lister. I have affiliate links for cross-listers too. I've used Vendu for years. I recently moved away from Vendu and started using OneShop. There's advantages and disadvantages to both of those platforms. None of the cross-listing tools are, uh, are perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll promise you that. None of the cross-listing tools are perfect. They all have warts, so to speak. And it's just choosing like which are the features and uh, that are important to you and the warts that you don't care about and make your make your decision. I do have Vindu linked in my profile. If you want to sign up through that, I think you get 25% off for your first month. And I have one shop linked in my profile too. And I think if you sign up for that through that link, you get $10 off your first month. Both of those have free trials to check out both free trials. Click on the link, get both, you know, try both free trials, try the other ones that are out there. There's a whole bunch of cross listing platforms. They're all going to tell you they're the best. Every reseller that is on social media that has a presence is going to tell you whichever one that they use is the best. And I'm going to tell you there is no best. They're all equally weird. They're all equally decent and uh, make your decision. Personally, I think all around uh, for if I was still cross listing on more than two platforms, I'm just eBay posh. Now, if I was going to go back to a more complex business where it's on five or six platforms, I think I would switch back to, I would go back to Vendu, but of course I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with one shop. It's nice and easy. It's all my automation tools and it's all my, um, my cross listing and one app, one login, uh, you know, it's one monthly fee per month. It's $45 and it's all on this app. It's on my phone. It has warts too. There's certain things about it that I wish they would improve, but 
Um, I like having it on the app. I do a lot of cross listing when I'm in the car. Kim's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. I do my cross listing or I'm sitting on the couch at night. Kim's watching TV and I sit here idly just cross listing on my phone. I like that. It works good for me. I built a rhythm and routine around that. I like it. But again, if it was more complex, if I had like Mercari and Depop and Grailed and Facebook Marketplace, um, one shop wouldn't be the move for that. It, it just, uh, yeah, it just doesn't have a good like organization, like inventory organization tool, which I don't need. I'm just eBay Poshmark. I can keep it simple, but um, it does have uh, auto, what is it? Auto sales detection, which I think is a big thing. I don't know that I would get a cross listing tool that didn't have auto sales detection because that when that what happens is if something sells a Mercari, it'll take it down off of eBay and Poshmark automatically for you. I think that's a yeah. I would I would say from an experience cross listing now for about it'll be three years I think in May. Uh, I would say that auto sales detection is a huge deal. So that would be one of the I would prioritize that is a feature. Both Vendu and One Shop have auto sales protection. All right, we got two more Poshmark orders, and then I'm going to go outsourcing. We got a Foot Joy shirt here, brand new with tags. This is the second one we sold this weekend. Bought a bunch of these Foot Joys. My buy cost for most of them is around $15. My buy cost is in the 20s on some of them, but most of them is around $15. This might have been one of the higher buy cost ones. This is going out to Stacy. This sold for a best offer of $44 plus shipping. I got a lot of low ball offers on this shirt, but I held my ground and sold for $44. I had it listed for $49. There's two different types of buyers for a lot of retail arbitrage. There's people who want 80% off. I don't want those people. And there's people who want 50 to 60% off. I like those people. So this is going out to Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. And this one's basically like 56% off, right? That's the buyer that I like for retail arbitrage. Sometimes that means I have to wait a little bit longer. But if I'm, if I'm going to buy stuff, retail arbitrage for a lot of money, my buy cost is high, I just have to wait. I have to get that price. I can't just turn it at 80% off because then I don't make any money. So that's part of the retail arbitrage game. It's a tricky beast. It's a little different than thrifting. It's a little different than garage selling because your buy cost is just so much higher per unit. You're welcome, Jay Baker. And take everything that I said about it, take that as a grain of salt. Listen to some other creators, right, that have been buying and selling for years or have used different cross-listing platforms. Hear their take on things too. Take everything you hear on the internet with a grain of salt, right? I think the best thing to do is to take a, a series of tips and tricks from people that generally seem like they got their shit together on the internet. Take, you know, listen to four or five or six different people that you, that seem like they got it together that you trust and then make a good decision for yourself. Don't listen to anybody verbatim. There's just too many people. Remember, there's always like, <laughs> there's always like some sort of like affiliate link or like commission thing that's attached to it. So you got to be careful when you just listen to people verbatim. And, you know, I don't think they're being, I don't think there's any ill will. I've used affiliate links and I've had sponsorship deals and I've had all kinds of commission based stuff. And it's been a good thing for my business, but I think I've always tried to be as, uh, as honest as possible and encourage people to make their own decisions on top of that too. So nobody, just because I say like, Hey, that person's got affiliate links attached to this. So just you know, take it with a grain of salt. doesn't mean that I think that they're dishonest people it just means, Hey, they have a financial incentive buy that thing and you should be aware of it and you should still make a good decision uh this is going out to roxanne is that the right one? Oh, sorry i didn't even tell, tell you what that one was it was a lauren ralph lauren Brand new with tags, like quarter zip, like a athletic long sleeve little top. Uh, Warren Ralph Warren. I bought it at a thrift store for five bucks. It sold for $29. It was brand new with tags going out to Roxanne. So nice profit on that item. That took about six weeks to sell. I don't pick up a ton of Warren Ralph Warren, but for five bucks, brand new with tags, let's freaking go. 
All right, that's it. We are all shipped out. Unless people have last minute questions, things they want to share. I'm going to head off here and get on. I got some sourcing plans for the day. That's the last one. Thank you, Roxanne. Got a full bin of stuff over here. Oh, yeah. It's like overflowing bin worth of stuff. Organize this a little better here. All right, shipping's done. Good weekend of sales. I'm happy with it. 37 total items. We shipped out 21 of those today. We shipped out the rest on Saturday. I'll see you again soon. Uh, probably tomorrow at some point. We're going to do a whatnot show tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, this Tuesday, I'm going to do a shoe show, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. All brand new shoes. Everything starts at $59. Then next Tuesday, I'm going to do a dollar starts clothing show. I'm going to shift the model from doing every single week, doing a dollar start clothing show um, with a lot of my pieces and consigner pieces. I'm going to do that once a month. I'm going to do a bigger show, more items and hotter items. Um, that's part of the, the magic there too. Going to try to get rid of some, more of the mids and get more of the high end stuff and make that show a lot of fun and good stuff. So once a month, $1 starts clothing will be on Tuesdays. That'll be next Tuesday. This Tuesday, we're doing shoes, baby. Brand new. $59, you name it. And uh, that's what we'll do tomorrow. If you're new to whatnot, I have a link depending on what platform you're on. It's up below, above or down below where you go to chris at peak.com. Click on that link. You'll get $15 credit for free if you sign up with the link for the first time. And uh, yeah, you can get 15 bucks and you can come into the show and you can go shopping or you can use that on somebody else's show. No strings attached. There was one more sale this weekend. This is kind of an interesting story. Carbon to cobalt. It's not that interesting. Uh, men's size large, it's a short sleeve button up kind of knit shirt. It's actually a really nice pattern to it. This sold for $19 plus shipping on eBay, but the buyer's address, uh, they're, they didn't have a street in their address. They just had a number. What's up, Chris Spap? Uh, later, Jay Baker. They just had us like the, the zip code, you know, the city, their name, but they didn't have a street address. It just had like a number like 2732, but no name of the street. So I had to message them and say, Hey, let me know what your full address is, like your street address, so I can get this shipped out to you. And we'll do that as soon as we can. Just let me know. And actually, I'm going to double check and see if they got back to me on that. That would be cool just to get this done and over with. Let's check. No, they did not. Let me just double check one more thing. My eBay messages. Uh, no. So probably have to ship this tomorrow for them. Hopefully they get back to me pretty soon, but that doesn't happen too often with me, but I would say that's like a, I don't know, maybe like a twice a year kind of thing. That's not super common, but hopefully they just get back to me and we could ship it out. Otherwise I'll just have to cancel the order. Uh, but usually they just get, the people will get back to me. All right, y'all have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow, Tuesday, 7 30 PM Eastern time over on whatnot. I would love to have you. We got some crazy shoes including shoes that I haven't run yet. I'm going to add some new shoes tomorrow to the mix. Uh, every stream I do, I'm going to be bringing in shoes that I haven't streamed with before. So you get a fresh look at some fresh kicks. And remember, $2 from every single sale goes to the Farm Cafe, feed all regardless of means. Over the weekend, we raised $91 more for the Farm Cafe. And that mean, by we, I mean y'all um, contributed to that. So you got some fresh kicks and you can feel good about those fresh kicks because you know that a couple of bucks is going to help out somebody who needs a meal in the small mountain town of Boone, North Carolina. We dropped off a check for $183 for them on Thursday from the weekend before, and we already got 91 ready to go for the next check for them. So thank y'all. I'm excited about that. We're going to keep it rolling for a little bit, as long as y'all like it and, and y'all you know enjoy being part of something good. And we're going to keep rolling with it for a bit, because I think um, I know they appreciate it a ton. I'm actually editing a video 
Uh, I was working on it yesterday from when I went up there on Thursday and learned a little bit about the Farm Cafe. I'm going to share that video with you uh, sometime in the next couple of days. It's kind of a big sloppy edit that'll take me a little while just because there's so much footage and there's a lot of like cutting and, and all that stuff. And it was all GoPro footage. So it just takes me a little bit longer, but working on it, get that video out to you. I think you're really going to enjoy seeing the food that they're doing, like they're bringing to people. The food is just out of this world good. And I think you're going to enjoy hearing from the executive director up there um, and the former di executive director, Renee. You're going to love hearing from them, hear about like the challenges they're facing in the community and how they're taking it on and uh, how the money that we donated last Thursday is going to contribute to that. So that video will come out soon. I'm excited about it. Um, it's really fun editing that video. It's definitely a feel good video and it's definitely cool just uh, yeah, to be back up at the farm cafe. I hadn't been there in a little bit, so hadn't talked to Renee in a while. So that was really cool. And I'm having fun editing the video. I'll get it out to you soon. In the meantime, I'll see you soon. I got work to do. I'm heading out in the road. Wish me luck. I'll see you soon. Peace.